Hi, I'm Paul Turnbull. Welcome to Monroe Live. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about um, thermal management in electric vehicles. And thermal management in electric vehicles is something that is what leads to the poor electric range in the winter time. And we can look at two different ways uh, that automakers are using to address the issue. Um, a relatively inexpensive way that is cheap and effective and a way that's a little bit more expensive but leads to much more efficiency and better electric range in the winter. So first of all, we're gonna look at the cheap and effective way. Um, I have this on my Chevy Bolt, low price cars. Uh, this one's from a, a Chinese vehicle. Uh, still a very effective way to produce heat in electric vehicles. Um, this is called a PTC heater and it's kind of in pieces right now, but I'm gonna open it up and show you the parts of it and how it works. Um, first of all, we've got the controller. So this controller just turns on and off the electric heater. Um, it senses the temperature of the water that uh, we're, what we're doing really is, is heating up water. And then we're gonna run that water through um, the battery and for our uh, uh, passenger compartment. So that's the control board. And then what the controller is controlling is it, it detects the, the temperature of the water through the thermistor and then it runs power from the battery into this board, which directs it to these heaters. These are little heating elements, uh, electric heating elements, not a whole lot different than a toaster. Um, so the heating elements heat up and then this directs water across these heating elements until the water comes out. And it senses the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature so that it can run the right amount of power to give the right outlet temperature. It heats up water quickly. And so um, cars with this type of system um, can give you cabin heat in a matter of a couple of minutes or less. And so from a comfort perspective, um, this is a great solution. From a cost perspective, it's a great solution. And from a package perspective, it's small, compact, fits in very nicely. It's low weight, lightweight. So a lot of advantages for this type of an approach. The big downside for this type of approach is that it uses a lot of power from your battery in order to get that um, temperature, high temperature water. And we have to have that high temperature water in the winter here in Michigan, you know, when it's uh, sub-zero, this kind of thing is absolutely essential not just for a cabin heat, but also the battery needs to have that heat to operate normally. So we run a little bit of power from the battery to heat it up and then the battery works better. Um, all of that power though, that's not going to the road to propel the vehicle, it means your electric range goes down really significantly. Um, often more than 20% electric range reduction when you use this type of, of heat. And although, so it works well, it's cheap, but that electric range reduction in the winter time can be a, a real problem. So for, for several companies, uh, Tesla was the first, and now it's becoming quite standard. This is actually a Chevy Equinox, and they're using a new method for, a different method for producing heat. This is a heat pump. And the way a heat pump works, it's a little bit like an air conditioner that's running in reverse, or it's actually can run either way. So it can produce cold temperatures or it can produce warm temperatures, depending on the direction of the flow through the, through the system. And so we've got both, uh, you know, the traditional home air conditioner has an element outside that gets warm and the element inside, which gets cool. And this has both of those elements in the same spot. 
and we can choose the direction either to heat things up or to make things cool. And the beauty of it is that it's much more efficient than, so it uses much less energy from the battery to produce the same amount of heat. The downside is, as you can see, there's a lot more plumbing involved, um, both uh, plumbing from, uh, for the coolant and plumbing for refrigerant. So something like Freon, but it's, uh, we're not actually using Freon, um, but it's a, a refrigerant and a coolant system uh, that have to both be plumbed at relatively high pressures uh, and heat exchangers. So you end up with lots of plumbing to do a, a, a heat pump. But the benefit of course is that um, in the winter time, you're more efficiently creating that heat and so you lose a lot less range. So in this case, the range reduction is more on the order of 10% uh, in the winter time versus the 20% range reduction that you get with the PTC heater. So, all right, let me just go briefly through how a heat exchanger like this uh, heat pump works uh, in principle. And I'll just go briefly through the components of it. First, there's this business here, which is, has a couple of heat exchangers that are exchanging heat between the coolant and the refrigerant. There are two different fluids in this system. So the refrigerant um, goes from the compressor, which is located behind here, can't really see it, but the compressor uh, compresses the refrigerant. It, it runs through an orifice that um, reduces the temperature, um, and that's where the refrigeration happens. Then this heat exchanger moves the heat from either from the coolant or to the coolant. The coolant then goes into this radiator. So the radiator and um, condenser up front is the part that exchanges heat to and, to and from the air, the outside air. So ultimately you have to move heat to and from the air, just like you do in your home air conditioner, where if you wanna bring the temperature down in the house, you have to heat up the outside air with the outside unit. So here we have the both inside and outside units are together in the heat pump, and we can choose the direction of flow to either heat up or cool down the coolant. So coolant being water and glycol, and refrigerant being a kind of freon, that the refrigerant gets cooled by um, compressing and then running it through an orifice, and then exchange that heat into the coolant. The coolant exchanges the heat with the air to if you're air conditioning, doing the air conditioning function. And it sends that, if you're doing the heating function, you send that coolant back to a, a heater core, which blows the air into the um, passenger compartment, or sends that heat to uh, the heater in the, the heat exchanger inside the battery to warm the battery up. So that's just a high level view of how the a heat pump works and how it's implemented in this vehicle. So thermal management in electric vehicles, in an internal combustion engine vehicle, you've got the engine, which is shedding a ton of heat all the time. And so you can just take some of that waste heat and use it to heat the cabin, which is essentially what we do in internal combustion engines and hybrids. Um, so electric vehicles are so efficient, they don't have that much waste heat. So we need to have some kind of heater in the car to heat not just the cabin, but also the battery because batteries only work or work best in a very narrow temperature range, which happens to be about the same temperature range that people like the, the cabin. So that's, uh, that's what we have to do on EVs. There's different ways that companies are doing it. Um, it's really great to see something like a heat pump in a low-end vehicle like the 
uh, Chevy Equinox at $35,000 now. So they finally gotten the cost down on this type of system to give efficient capability in a low price point vehicle. So it's nice to see. In the past, we only saw the PTC type heater um, in the low cost vehicles. So that's all we have for today. Uh, thanks for joining us here at Monroe Live. Appreciate it.